Okay, hello there. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all well. Um, first of all, if anyone's new to my channel, I'd like to give you a big warm welcome to Warren's Team Talk. And um, hello to everyone for coming and thank you for stopping by and tuning in to my channel and uh, seeing what I've got to offer. Now, today I've got a brand new spanking shiny hot off the press video, as they always are on my channel. And Today, I'm going to be talking to you about my experiences of watching Arsenal during the 1989-90 season. And um, that was the season after Arsenal's glorious um, victory in the 88-89 season that was won on the last day of the season in such dramatic circumstances at Anfield. Anyway, so... I hope you're all well anyway, and I hope you're fine and staying safe and remembering to wear your masks and all the rest of it. I mean, it does look like a quite a bright, sunny day today, so that's good news. However, I can see some clouds in the distance, so that's um, some stormy clouds as well, I hasten to add. So let's hope that doesn't um, develop into anything. Uh, anyway, enough of me rattling on about the uh, the weather. The good news is, so from my point of view, um, is that I'm I'm gonna hopefully by next week. I think it is. I might even be getting a haircut, so that would be absolutely fantastic. No more looking like a cross between a bloody rabid werewolf and a yeti and Jack Grealish. So I'll be absolutely delighted with that. So let's see what happens with that. Anyway, so without further ado, um, I guess we should really get on with it, shouldn't we? And um, get on with the show. So let me just get rid of that. I'm sure you don't want to sit there looking at my boat race for the duration of this video. Anyway, so here we go. Um, Yeah, so here we go. And uh, like I say, it's the 90, Arsenal's 1989-90 season, which we're looking at today. And after winning the league title the previous year in such dramatic circumstances, the big question on everyone's lips, really, at the start of this season was whether Arsenal would go on to retain their title Sadly, Arsenal were not able to compete in the European Cup. However, because of the English club's continued ban from all European com competition as a consequence of the Hastings Stadium disaster in 1985, when 39 people, in my opinion, were murdered. Um, some people would say they were injured, but uh, were killed. But they, in my opinion, it was murder, and over 600 were injured. Now, I don't blame the Liverpool supporters for that because the reports I've heard is that um, there was a lot of non-Liverpool supporters in, the Liverpool, in that uh, enclosure where the stampede happened. And a lot of them were not, not even from Merseyside. So, um, and a lot of them were just going out there to have a fight. Um, so I can, I can leave it to your imagination to work out um, what clubs were involved in that. I don't think we have to really think too hard about it, but there you go. Um, anyway, this season was a bit of a weird one, really, for me, because I don't really remember going to too many games. Um, however, it was around this time that I had a season ticket at Arsenal. And uh, it, it was po quite possible that I did go to a lot of the games, but I really don't remember it. Um, but I do remember at, around this time that Arsenal were talking about a dramatically increasing the prices of the season tickets. So it's highly likely that I decided that I couldn't afford to pay that amount of money because I think they were talking about trebling the prices or something for the season tickets. Um, so, uh, I, honestly, I can't remember. But I did go to a few games, but not not a lot as far as I can remember. And I remember like viewing the goings on at Arsenal from afar, really. 
So that's why I'm going to talk to you, uh, my memories of the season. All right. So I said it's the 1989-90 season. And in the 1989-90 season, during the course that season, Arsenal signed Colin Pates from Charlton Athletic. And a guy called Sigurdi, or Siggy Johnson was signed from Sheffield Wednesday. Um, now, also during this season, Arsenal's outgoings were Arsenal sent Kevin Campbell, Kevin Campbell out on loan to Leicester City. Um, Noel Quinn left eventually to join Manchester City. And Andrew Marriott, who was uh, a goalkeeper, I think he was either a reserve team goalkeeper or a youth team goalkeeper, left to join Nottingham Forest. So um, this is the Arsenal 1989-90 uh, team group. Um, so as you can see, they're sat there with the um, the league the league championship trophies. Um, the the one that you may not recognise uh, on to the to the left of the team is I think it's the Barclays League title. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, but they were that season when they won the title, they were given. Two trophies, one from the sponsor and then one from the Football League. So, yeah, I, I love that Football League trophy. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It really is a proper trophy. It has to be said. Um, so, then the, the start of the season saw Arsenal compete in the FA Charity Shield, the... Um, the annual curtain raiser charity match uh, friendly um, at Wembley Stadium. And uh, Arsenal lost this game by one goal to nil, thanks to a goal by Peter Beardsley. Um, of, so, yeah, like I say, Arsenal lost this game by one goal to nil. Um, but um, I wasn't really too concerned about this, but... Um, I remember I managed to get a ticket for the match and I went off to the game at Webley Stadium um, on my own. And as far as I remember, anyway, I went on my own. And to be honest, I would just wish I hadn't bothered because Arsenal did not play well at all. It was a bit of a damp squid, to be honest. Um, now, the next game I can remember was on the opening day of the season, the 19th of August where Arsenal played Manchester United away at Old Trafford. And they opened their first division uh, title defence, like I say, at Old Trafford against Manchester United. And although I didn't go to the game, uh, I remember um, getting updates from the, from the radio and seeing the highlights on TV in the evening. And... Arsenal sadly were ripped to ripped to pieces and lost the game heavily uh, by four goals to one. Um, when I first heard that they they were the, the score was four one, I was thinking, yes, come on, you Gunners! I thought they were winning, but unfortunately, it wasn't the case. Now, this was also the infamous day when Michael Knighton was introduced to the Old Trafford crowd as the new owner of Manchester United, who it was claimed that he had bought um, for £20 million. This deal eventually collapsed, though, um, when Michael Knighton's financial backers um, pulled out of the, out of the deal. And um, they... Yeah, they and they eventually pulled out of the deal. So, yeah, quite a heavy de defeat. The next game I remember is on the 22nd of August when Arsenal beat Coventry City 2-0. This was the first home game in the new season and it saw Arsenal power to a comfortable 2-0 victory over Coventry City thanks to goals from Brian Marwood and Michael Thomas. 
So um, we started to um, reignite our, our form. And then on the 14th of October, Arsenal played Manchester City at home. And I remember going to this match with my mate Steve and we travelled up to Highbury on the train. And then the tube, once we arrived at London, Charing Cross, um, we eventually ended up on the uh, Piccadilly line up to Arsenal tube station. And on, on the Piccadilly line tube, I remember we met some Manchester City fans who we had a, an interesting chat with and who were who were a really nice couple of lads, actually. Um, they were very complimentary about the Arsenal team and the way that George Graham had had them playing. And I also remember them saying that they were they were very fearful about the, the game that was about to be played that afternoon. And they fully expected Arsenal to win comfortably. And they also thought that Arsenal would go on to retain the league title. Um, so, yeah, that was quite an interesting chat. And, yeah, like I say, they were really nice fellas. Yeah, I wish I was in their shoes now, to be honest, with, uh, with Arsenal. <laughs> anyway, just as the Man City fans predicted, though, Arsenal won the game comfortably by four goals to nil. Thanks to goals from Michael Thomas, uh, Perry Goals, Perry Groves Brace, and Paul Merson. Now, on the the next game, I remember, was on the fourth of November, nineteen eighty nine, when uh, Arsenal played Norwich City at home. Now, this is the infamous. Um, the infamous game at Highbury um, when Arsenal and Norwich um, got embroiled in, in some handbags, I think is the best way that you can describe it. Um, now, after defeating Manchester City 4-0 comfortably, Arsenal lost their next two games away at Tottenham Hotspur 2-1 and 3-0 away to Everton, which was... The club's first defeat since the opening day of the season. They then drew with Derby County, one all at home. So going into this game against Norwich, Arsenal's form had slumped somewhat. Um, I never went to this game, but I remember this game against Norwich City World because of the way that the game ended. The game was played on the weekend of bonfire night, which was quite apt, really, given the way that the game ended. So, because there were plenty of fireworks. Um, the game started very amicably, with both teams giving Arsenal legend David O'Leary a guard of honour for making his second 622nd appearance for the club, which was an Arsenal club record. But this, this to be honest, was the calm before the storm. Now, listening to the game on the radio and hearing the updates coming through on the radio from Highbury, I could not believe what I was hearing. Um, Norwich City raced into a deserved 2-0 lead by half-time, and then the game apparently started to get a bit tetchy when Norwich won a free kick after Malcolm Allen, Allen won a free kick, which David... O'Leary accused Malcolm Allen of going to ground far too easily to win and then dragging him along the ground and unceremoniously and aggressively picking him up off the ground. Then in the second half, Arsenal brought the game back to 2-2 after goals from Niall Quinn and a penalty from Lee Dixon. But then Norwich went 3-2 up after Tim Sherwood scored for the Canaries. And then the man of the day, David Leary, grabbed a goal for Arsenal in front of the North Bank to equalise for the Gunners. And then in the dying seconds of the game, Arsenal won a penalty, which Michael Thomas won. And Lee Dixon initially missed the, the spot kit, but then scored from a rebound um, as he sort of scuffed the ball and the ball slowly um, rebounding to the empty net. And Alan Smith, who'd followed the ball into the net and 
Then there followed a mass melee inside the goal and six yard box, which was, to be honest, was little more than a lot of shouting and pushing and chuffing. And in fact, I think that I'm right in saying that only one punch was thrown. There then followed a massive media inspired backlash um, to the events at Highbury that day. Um, so yeah, it was it was not it was not a good look to be quite frank. Um, and then the next game I remember I know I actually did go to this game um, was the game on the 11th of November at uh, the Den um, when Arsenal defeated Millwall by two goals to one. So it was a case of another season, another trip to the Den and running the gauntlet of uh, Millwall's Den. Um, I have no idea why I went to this game after what I experienced a year before, but I did. And yet again, it was a nightmare. Arsenal won the game by two goals to one, thanks to goals from Michael Thomas and Niall Quinn. But the drama ensued again after the game had finished. We were kept in the ground for about 30 to 45 minutes. And then we were let out um, we were let out and we had to be held inside the ground while the police cleared the area of the Millwall supporters who seemed intent on trying to attack us Arsenal supporters. Um, I seem to remember there were various types of missiles raining down on us and whilst I was standing there dodging the missiles I remember saying to myself why the hell am I putting up with this nonsense? And I vowed never to go to the den again to watch a game of football. I did, though, although, to be fair, it was only a Kent Cup final. So it wasn't a game that Millwall were involved in. It was just the annual Kent Cup final. So, and, and, and those of you who don't know, the Kent Cup final was is a cup competition played uh, between all the teams that are resident in the county of Kent. And me and my mate Mick, we went there one year to uh, see the Kent Cup finals. It was held at the new, and it, then by then it was played at the new den, not the old den. So it's a lovely stadium, but um, it's not an area that I particularly fancy the idea of going to watch football in, that's for sure. Um, so anyway, the 3rd of December, was the next game that I remember, which was a 1-0 win over Manchester United. Um, now, this was this was a really dour game on a bitterly cold day. And I think, if I remember right in saying, it was quite a foggy day as well. Anyway, I believe the game was settled, if I remember rightly, by Perry Groves' goal which he scored in front of the North Bank when he fired a shot on the turn into the opposite bottom corner of the Manchester United net. So, yeah, that was the game against Manchester United and it's always good beating them, to be honest, if you're an Arsenal fan. Um, so, the next game that I remember in this season was a home game against Liverpool on the 18th of April 1990. And there's one reason and one reason only that I remember this game. And this was the way, this was because of the way that Steve McMahon was mercilessly taunted throughout the whole game with taunts of one minute, one minute, one minute. Now, the reason for that was because the previous, obviously in the previous uh, season at Anfield, um, with less than a minute to go, um, Steve McMahon um, was famously shown on the TV coverage of going around to all these Liverpool teammates and reminding them all that there's only one minute to go and there's one minute left for them to hold out to make sure they won the title. Because at that stage, they were losing the game 1-0 and as long as they didn't win lose the game by two clear goals, they would be champions. So he was just trying to remind the players, look, come on, we've only got um, under a minute to go and we'll be crowned champions. So let's just keep it tight. 
Um, but as we all know, it didn't quite work out that way. And uh, Arsenal won the league title and the Arsenal fans took great pleasure in reminding him of the fact. So <laughs> that was quite funny, actually. And he got absolutely destroyed. Um, the game at Highbury for this game, though, ended in a 1-1 draw, draw with Paul Merson uh, scoring the Arsenal goal and John Barnes was the goal scorer for Liverpool. And um, so that was really all I remember about that season. Now, sadly, Arsenal were not able to retain their league title. Um, and had they managed to do so, it would have been the first time since the 1933-34 season that Arsenal would have successfully defend, regained uh, a league title um, because that during that period they won the league in 1932-33 and then again in the 1933-34 season. And that is... Um, that was the first time they managed to do it. And they did also win it in the 1934-35 season. So, because they won it that during that period, they won it three years on the bounce. So, why did this happen? Why did I? Why do I think that they didn't win the the league in the 89-90 season? Now, in my opinion, there were three main reasons why um, they didn't. There were that season there were eight London clubs in the first division, which means that 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 through the course of the season, they would have to have played 14 London derbies. Now, these games are always notoriously intense and difficult games and take a lot out of uh, players. Um, so that could have been one factor, but I'm not overly convinced that's a major reason, to be honest, because there's always a lot of London clubs in the, in the top tier of English football. Um, and then the other, another reason was that Arsenal found the crown of champions a difficult one to wear. Um, it, is, it is a well-known fact that when teams play uh, the league champions, um, they always raise their game because it's, if they do manage to get anything out of the game, either a draw or a win, it's a massive scout for them, particularly if they win the game, because to beat the league champions is a massive scout for, for sides. And it can be a massive, huge boost to their confidence. And the, the final reason was because Arsenal just simply didn't score nearly enough goals. In fact, they scored roughly 20%, 26% fewer goals in the 89-90 season than they did the previous year in the 88-89 season when they scored 73 goals uh, throughout the course of the season. And then in this season, 1989-90 season, they scored 54, which was the worst of all the teams who finished in the top six that year. They did, however, have a really good defensive record. Um, the second best in the top six, equal with Aston Villa, on, and they both scored 38. And the champions, Liverpool, just conceded one goal less with 37. So defensively, they were very good, but it was just going forward where there was a bit of a problem. So, yeah, that was the 1989-90 season from my perspective. And like I say, I don't remember too much about the season, but what I do remember, it was, it was quite a difficult one for Arsenal. Um, for the reasons I've already just mentioned. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, before you go, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Please remember to like the video. And please remember to pass it on to other people so that I can get my name out there and get my videos um, more widely known and so on and so forth. 
I really appreciate that. And it's one way, it's one thing you can do to really help me grow my channel. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'm, I'm going to be putting out a video towards the end of the week. I'm going to do another uh, Premier League prediction show. And that, time, that one will be um, a live stream. So if you want to come on and have a chat about the games, feel free to join me and put a comment in and I'll definitely read it out. And yeah, that be, should be a bit of a laugh, really, and enjoyable. So that will probably be on, on Friday that I do that. So probably around just after lunchtime, hopefully. So yeah, keep your notifications on and everything. And, um, you know, then you'll be able to see when I'm going live. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show today. Um, well, you'll be seeing this after actually, let me say about that. Um, you'll be seeing this one after I do the live stream. So um, forget all that, but yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and please remember to take care. And also remember to spare, spread some love and happiness and kindness around the world. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Now take care. Bye for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks very much for all the people that have watched my videos and subscribed to my channel. I really do appreciate it. And... Um, yeah, it's a really, really great help. So thanks very, very much. Take care now. Bye for now. Bye.